Ákosi Mátyás Eztása és a Békehar első bajnokát, a Nagy Táli! We face today a situation characterized by greatly increased international interdependence, rich in possibilities, but also fraught with dangers unknown to the world of yesterday. This is the world we must master. This is the world in which a new approach is necessary from every single man and from the various governments, but also collectively. Our problem is how to use what man has created for the benefit of man instead of for his destruction. That problem can be resolved only by a joint effort in which all are willing to take their part and to carry their responsibility. That is the meaning of the United Nations for all people. This is Phil Miller reporting from Des Moines. With me is Vice President Irving A. Duffy of the Ford Motor Company. He's also General Manager of their Tractor and Implement Division. Mr. Duffy, what are you doing in Des Moines? Well, we had a very nice luncheon today, Phil, with the Chamber, Chamber of, Commerce. of Commerce. Yes, and we're visiting our, our implement, Des Moines Implement Plant. Why, why specifically did you come here? Well, we're very much interested in this plant, uh, Phil. This is our largest plant outside of the Detroit area. And we're uh, here looking at some new products we're putting in here. What are they? To be made. Well, right now they are uh, uh, assembling for the first time the Ford loader, both the farm loader and the industrial loader. And we're uh, making arrangements now to bring a, a rather wide variety of new products that have never been produced here before into the plant. Why did you happen to decide on Des Moines for that expansion? Well, of course, we've had a little experience here in Des Moines. We, uh, we think it's a very fine atmosphere. We've uh, found the people in the uh, Chamber of Commerce and the city very cooperative uh, in their relations with us. And uh, not only is that so, but Des Moines, of course, in Iowa, occupies a very fine position for the distribution of the products of this plant. What about labor in Iowa compared with other industrial areas, which well, Iowa is coming to be? Well, of course, uh, as I said to the Chamber of Commerce today, uh, Iowa really has an enviable reputation as a state because of the tremendous expansion of its industrial activities uh, still remaining. 
so t uh, terrifically important as an agricultural state. And I think that speaks well for the labor that's available in uh, Iowa here. About how many do you employ at this plant? Well, this plant, uh, uh, being a, an implement plant, uh, fluctuates seasonally. Now, our, the very purpose of our introduction of these new products into this plant is to uh, make a real serious attempt to level off production and stabilize it. And uh, we're going to bring in here, we already have a rotary cutter. We're bringing a new, very large, 100-inch rotary cutter in here. We're bringing a very important uh, implement, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, more costly implements to the farmer. By costly, I mean a high price uh, job, is the uh, forage harvester. And, uh, and the forage blower goes with it. That's a very important item to this uh, plant and to this part of the country.
insofar as the right of Speaker Rayburn to rule as he ruled, I think that he was thoroughly justified under the present rules of the House. When the question was presented to him, I think he had no other choice uh, than to rule as he did. I do not believe the time is ripe yet for televising the proceedings, for example, of the House of Representatives and of the Senate. Insofar as committee proceedings are concerned, I personally can see no objection to that uh, procedure. As a former newspaper man, I, of course, am interested, always have been interested in the widest possible dissemination of news affecting the public interest. The ruling of Speaker Rabin is a death sentence for all television and radio recordings as far as the House committees are concerned. Personally, I believe the power of decision rests with the committees and not the Speaker. The people want television and they want radio reports. In all fairness, the Rules Committee must report out a rule that will definitely determine authority and permit a growing and popular industry to function on a parity with other news mediums. like you're dancing yourself right out of the ring. How about that? Well, Harry, you can't go on forever. Well, Ray, from what you've shown us, it looks like your career as a dancer is going to be about as big as your career as a fighter, and that will be something. Well, Harry, I hope so. I've always loved performing for people, and November the 7th here at the French Casino, not, a, not only do I hope to make a debut, but the start of a very wonderful career, and I feel that if I continue studying with Henry Letang at his studio, that I will be a success. There were some reports circulated that the British people uh, are beginning to despair of the United Nations. Is it true? Well, I don't know if I can speak for the British people. I was there for just two or three days and uh, a little more, and I had talks with Mr. Eden and uh, two other people in the Foreign Office, but uh, I didn't get around to interrogating the whole of the British people, certainly. But I don't think, judging from the press and people I did talk to, that there's uh, any undue despondency or cynicism about the United Nations. It may be they've never been so hopeful in a sense as some people over here have been. It's possible. We had an experience of the League of Nations. It wasn't a great success, and you weren't members of that. But nevertheless, I don't think that the, the people I talked to at any rate uh, uh, think it's going to crack up or necessarily fail. I don't think so at all. And so long as it does go on, so long as with all our difficulties we manage to be there and talk about them and have arguments in public, well, I'm sure the whole British people would think that's a good thing. It would be a bad thing if it cracked up. Thank you very much. International News Service and International News Photos.
I don't suppose there's ever been such general uh, uh, corruption through a department as exists there today. I say that we cannot look to Mr. Stevenson to clean it up. He's been... No! <laughs> he hasn't been any very successful remover of corruption in the state of Illinois, where he comes from. Not only that... Not only that, no Democrat can clean it up because he's responsible to the same organizations who put in office, the men who have betrayed the public trust. He's responsible for, to the same people who set up these departments, hundreds and thousands of them in those bureaus. He can't clean it out. He can't change the whole moral tone that has deteriorated since I went down to Washington. He can't change that because he's tied in with that Democratic organization. Only a clean broom can sweep this platter to a point where we can hope to change the trend that will destroy the very character of the American people if it remains de uh, defiling the heads of the government of this country, condoned by Mr. Truman, the president himself. I...